found it. Uh, the foundation is the equality, the recognition of the uh, urban area of what the rural area can bring and the pride of the rural area to serve the people in the urban area. And let me uh, give an example uh, here because Many people in the, in, the, uh, in the rural area don't have the means, let alone the technology or the infrastructure, to produce to the best possible uh, extent. Raven was talking about subsistence uh, uh, farming. Many of these farmers want to become a smallholder farmer who, are, uh, who is able to sell her, because many of the smallholder farmers are, are women farmers, to sell their products for a fair price, to get recognition and to get uh, uh, money for the value and the quality they produce. So quality is here, uh, is here is also uh, is also very important. Infrastructure, technology, connectivity mm -hmm. is of crucial importance. I was in the, in India, where uh, more than, than one uh, billion people uh, are living, but almost overall <coughs> in the most uh, uh, remote rural area uh, are connected through tele. To, 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 to telecom, uh, this is something, and they have also most of them have also a bank account so that they can make use of financial services. This is uh, making uh, progress, and this is what I mean when I say sit around the table and see what you can mean uh, to each other. Uh, the, the, the dreams about urban agriculture are nice, but to be to tell you the truth, and you said it already, Morgana, I've been the Minister of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality in the Netherlands. Well, some people may be able to produce something in uh, the urban area, but it's impossible to produce enough and of the right food safety and food quality in the, uh, in the urban area. I, uh, you forgot to mention that I am also a marathon runner, so one a year I, had, I ran a marathon in uh, Beijing, beautiful city, but a little bit of pollution. And that Sunday, the mayor of Beijing had requested people uh, to stop the cars because there were uh, crazy marathon runners. So the drivers in uh, Beijing, indeed, they stopped themselves or they were stopped by the police but I forgot to stop the motor. So, and let me tell you, afterwards I took a, 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 a bath because I was in a very luxury uh, hotel at the time on purpose, and I took a bath, and within one minute there was a, a black filter on the water. I mean, think about food production in such a polluted uh, uh, area. So let's be uh, very down to earth, and let's, uh, uh, of course, for the, for the connection of young children, reconnection of young children and people with how food is produced, uh, urban, uh, urban uh, agriculture may be very attractive or urban uh, food production. Um, let, me, let me encourage uh, this, but to bring it at scale, you really need rural, urban and recognition, investment and recognition. I'm going to have to find a way to make a link between a marathon and Plato, which is what I was going to talk about. And actually, so Plato wrote, any city, however small, is in fact divided in two. One the city of the poor, the other the city of the rich. And these are at war with one another. And I think that we have already started hearing this problem of inequality. And I, I was hoping to uh, maybe spend a little bit extra time now for this final question to turn to you on this idea of reducing the gaps between urban and rural, but also within urban, um, the divide between the rich and the poor, and you've mentioned uh, the slums. And uh, Hans Rosling had once asked the question, can slums be made history? So I would, I would like to ask you this question. Gerda, you want to start? Yes, let me, let me start this time because it's part of the Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development uh, Goals. I mean, slums, of course, should, the, the, they, they should, decent housing should be there, but also decent, uh, sustainable economy, uh, labor for people. And here I have an example to share. 
Uh, I mentioned already that I was in, uh, in India recently, uh, in Uttar Pradesh, we went to a, a, a little village where uh, mothers and adolescent uh, uh, girls got counseling and support from a nurse and midwife. And in the village, we were able to also uh, have a meeting with the mayor or the headman, as they call it. Uh, and I asked him, I said, well, you're a politician or you're a leader, but whatever you are, probably both. Um, you have dreams, you have ambitions on where to bring your village during your term in office. What is your dream uh, about this village uh, in five years' time? And he said, well, uh, I'm happy with the level of support we get right now. We have to recognize that we are a village in a very remote area. But my dream is that we are not dependent anymore in five years of support from the government. My dream is that people have decent education, decent housing, decent sanitation, and decent job where they can earn their own income, send their, uh, send their children uh, to school, and maintain their own family. And I think this is something we should strive uh, for. And it's all, um, it's all uh, written in the, in the Sustainable Development uh, Goals. It all has to develop bottom-up at country level, because we cannot drop it from the global level. It has to to be done under the leadership and ownership of government at country level, but this is what we uh, should, uh, should work uh, uh, on. So for young people it should become more attractive to stay in the rural area instead of fleeing to the slums of, uh, of the uh, urban area because they think that they can be, at least make a better life, even a little bit better than in a rural area for Hungary. Um, no opportunities uh, for the futures, let alone dreams for the future. And I think in, uh, in, the, in the urban area, uh, people should be attracted to work and improve their, to have a decent job and to improve their own lives and to maintain their own family. Thank you. I think it's, it's given a very good um, example of actually how the, the global agenda has to set this stage. I'll give an example of what is happening already on the ground. Um, so the cognition of the problem has been actually identified. So in countries, countries are taking leadership. I'll give an example of food. Kenya, um, the county of Kenya, um, and the mayor of Kenya, the local government, have taken upon them actually come up with the strategy. Food. And the strategy to be able to harness the issues of food security, uh, and nutrition. For the whole country or for city? Now it's for the city. Now, um, and so they have approached number of partners, and FL is one of them. Now, how do we ensure that this recognition of the problem in <coughs> actually can serve an example? And that is now coming up with the policy support, coordination, and Pastoral governance. And so, how then would the city of Nairobi, the county of, 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 of Nairobi, link up with the, the, the policy support at national level to ensure that this is defined at national level but also the subsidiarity of actually making sure that the problems within the cities are addressed, um, not only. Uh, uh, by, 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 by Nairobi County, said by different, uh, by, no, not only by the mayor himself, but the different stakeholders that actually can provide the support in the right area and the right investment. Look at the, the growth of the, 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 um, um, the mega shops. How would those sell as markets for even the very urban, the smaller city? How is that? Because then that will actually now do a backward linkage of creating jobs even in the school and school. How can that happen? So bringing in all these stakeholders to ensure that the solutions within the cities are, are addressed. Looking at the most vulnerable, what are the investments that are likely to happen other than just collecting tax? But how do you invest back in the slums where there's good sanitation, good water system, other social protection mechanisms that will harness these vulnerable groups to be part and parcel of this development? So it is happening, uh, and uh, many stakeholders are, are supporting, and, and uh, as, as indicated, uh, FAO and other partners are helping uh, Nairobi 
This is also linked to, to city to city experience from other countries, uh, for example. There are a number of uh, African countries, but also in, uh, in Latin America, that can serve as an example where solutions from the ground are harnessed and then supported by this group of frameworks. But very often we talk about uh, a private sector component. I'd like to add uh, uh, one more thing. For us here in this room, it is uh, very good to take home that we have to contribute to be reconnected with uh, how our food is produced. Because very often we are not aware, or at least our children or grandchildren are not aware how food is produced, let alone uh, how much uh, effort and how much energy and commitment uh, farmers and other parts of the, of the food value chain has uh, brought uh, to try to create a very tasty and healthy product for you, if you make the choice for a healthy and tasty uh, product. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing is we tend to think that uh, what is coming from the other side of the world is uh, healthier, is uh, more nutritious, is uh, better and it's probably safer because we don't sometimes don't trust our own food. This is also something we have to uh, try to reconnect uh, with our own food and of course it has to be safe. But the infrastructure and the connection between urban and rural area um, should guarantee that food that is produced in the rural area is meeting at least the standards of um, uh, safe and nutrition uh, food. For that reason, we need an agricultural policy of diversification, of uh, having having the right uh, food products, the different uh, crops and the different uh, the different uh, crops, uh, etc. So there's a lot to be th to think about, but I see uh, big, big and very positive opportunities. So thank you so much. I'd like to give a chance to the audience also to react. We have time for about one to two questions, and I see Anna in the front. And uh, I'll take the two questions together and uh, then turn to the speakers. And if you can uh, say who you are and who you are, just the question. So I'm Anne Topweiler, I'm the Director General of Biodiversity International, which works on agricultural biodiversity and food systems. Um, a number of years ago, the Economic Research Service of the U.S. Department of Agriculture did a study that looked at what if the United States actually produced what was advised by the dietary guidelines of the United States, and what would happen if we actually subsidized our agriculture along the lines of what we would be proposed to eat for a healthy diet. That study was never released. <laughs> So my point is, we talk about diversifying food systems and improving health, but the investments that governments are making in their agriculture sectors still are going into um, major grains, major staples. We are, we are not investing sufficiently in the products that provide a healthier diet and healthy nutrition. So as we're talking about how to improve the diet, improve the nutrition, address the triple burden, we also need to look back and make sure that we are supporting in terms of subsidies, improving um, the quality of the diet. That was another thing that was brought out in the US. We don't spend enough money on quality of fruits and vegetables, safety. So there's a lot of ways governments can redirect spending in support of a more nutritious diet, and we often forget that there are so many other government policies. Studies. And I was wondering, uh, also taking up on this quote of Plato, uh, do we understand enough of the different food systems within the city? One that provides for the rich and the middle, and the middle classes, which really in, in uh, increasing terms they rely on meat and processed food, and high value added products, which may also provide income for rural producers. And on the other hand, we have the slum population relying on a totally different food system. So I, I hear general things like social protection, uh, infrastructure, improving water and sanitation, 
But I don't hear much about the specificities of the food system providing for the slum population. So perhaps I don't know exactly who can take up on this, but I just leave it as a bombshell. <laughs> What can we, how can we deal in 20 minutes with uh, every detail? I mean, it's, uh, we need some more time. But one thing that strikes me, and I'm first uh, entering to the, to the, 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 the <coughs> final way to the last question. Mm -hmm. um, it is not always the provision of uh, uh, food. It is the availability and the accessibility of food. I would like to emphasize that we um, should make sure that people have access and that people can make their own choices. And then, of course, awareness is, uh, is important and education is uh, important and hygiene and sanitation is it's all important. But I would, I would try to avoid thinking we have to provide people with uh, food. I, my uh, desire is that people can make their own choices and make uh, make informed choices. So if we are talking about uh, the same, then it's a matter indeed of planning availability, uh, fair prices uh, indeed, so that people can afford to uh, buy the right things and to feed themselves uh, well. So that's, uh, that's one thing. And I think there is a lot already uh, uh, studies on the shelf. My opportunity to make this point um, if we um, if we need to have more research on this, make sure that it is research that will be used because there is too much research uh, um, that ends up uh, uh, upon the shelf. So uh, if you do more research, make sure that the researchers stand shoulder to shoulder with the people to implement it, and make sure uh, that they are invited or a little bit pushed to bring it to scale, because then we have a real uh, example. When it comes to the, um, to the right uh, investments and the subsidies, I think this is something Mr. Morais uh, should uh, put down. I think it's a great opportunity. I think it will be 2020 or 2021 that it will be a new uh, common agricultural policy defined. Um, this uh, common agricultural policy is already improving, is already focusing on uh, innovative uh, uh, agriculture, but also sustainable uh, production. But it's a step-by-step uh, -step approach, and the European uh, Union can play a big role in uh, in supporting by their uh, common agricultural policy and the uh, subsidies uh, involved to encourage farmers and food producers to take to take it into the right direction. And for that reason, it is crucial that it's not only um, uh, ministers of agriculture and food that are around, are around the table. I think you also need the ministers of health uh, around the table, the ministers of education, because food and nutrition is something where the different sectors come in, just like in uh, our uh, 59 countries. If you want to get nutrition uh, right, whether it is undernutrition, stunting, wasting, etc., or overnutrition, obesity, non communicable uh, diseases, you have to bring to the table the different departments and make sure that they are working uh, together. So it's an opportunity, and you never know what will happen in the United States. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> so think about the positive opportunities there as well. Yeah, thank you. Just on that note, uh, for the question you know, from, 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 from the US, um, of course, there are the political economies in, in that took us that overrides all these problems, no matter how much um, policy guidance can, can, can provide. And, and so, the question is who are the influencers in, 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 the, in the country? Uh, is it the parliament, uh, can you enact it into, into law to be able to ensure that it's implemented? So there are areas of where we can go a little further to be able to ensure that what guidelines have been provided can be enacted. So the political economy is extremely important to understand that food is an influence. Uh, and, and that's why I want to turn to the question of the food systems. Yes, we do have um, an, an, an FAO's approach now is really focusing on less focus on the food systems approach. Um, yes, 
if you look at the situations in most of developing countries or in the least developed countries, they are even short food systems where it's a system that grows what uh, eats what it produces. And we find that a number of some of them in the city are supplied, you know, supplied by the big um, 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 and supply chains and, and, and the retailers. The question is, how do we ensure that the food system is one, it is inclusive? How do we ensure that the food system is resilient? And how do we ensure it is sustainable? And so that is why for FAO, we really work at different levels. Number one is ensuring that we have the policy support and institutional frameworks that should actually govern the system. So when policy has been defined, how are the legal frameworks, institutional frameworks that can actually reinforce uh, these systems? Example, if we have big uh, um, retailer shops, how do we ensure that these retailer shops do support those who are uh, exiting from uh, getting a healthy diet from these, from these shops? Number one uh, is the awareness uh, creation. Making sure that these who are supported, that they are, they are empowered, training is, is important, and other social systems that are supposed to support the, 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 those who are left behind. So investment in the slums is extremely important. Then how do we ensure that there are linkages uh, uh, and, and that these, uh, uh, the, the other, um, the bigger uh, markets or the, the, the retailer shops are able to be able to sort of link to even the small borders that actually are able to produce for, for the markets. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so uh, our approach is number one, food systems. Number two, making sure that the policy guidelines and policy support are in place get the coordination of different stakeholders, including those who are marginalized. And the biggest important thing is the, the linkages of rural, urban linkages, especially the small cities where we do have um, jobs that have been created, where most of the youth are involved because of, you know, involved in transportation, they are involved in this, the, the, the logistics. They are also involved in the ITC that actually is allowing them to be able to, uh, to, to, to link small water farmers in the rural areas, but also providing the market access to the smaller towns that will link them to the bigger cities. So those are some of the few parts. Thank you very much, and I think we are now uh, we can now close with some keywords in our heads for the rest of the day: investment, policy, linkages, and awareness. Um, so I encourage you to think about those words as we go the, uh, for the rest of the day. And on this note, I'd like to close this session. Thank you all very much for your attention, and thank you in particular our speakers.